everything in your tool chest in your defensive line. You got pass rushers, you got young, you got old, you got run stoppers. Is everything in that uh, toolbox you want? Well, that's what I'm figuring out right now. So <laughs> I hope so. But uh, that's where we're out here right now, trying to figure out in practice. So uh, that's why we put guys in different positions all the time and, and see what guys can do. We're trying to figure out who can, who can rush, who can drop, um, who's stout against the run. So there's a lot of different combinations that I'm throwing out there just so I can evaluate it. And um, when we get close to game time, that I can put the guys in the best position to succeed. So far, but have you learned anything just from that one day that maybe you're kind of surprised by, or is just kind of new information you want to incorporate? Uh, no, you know, uh, it's really kind of changed for me over the years. You know, I, you know, you start off as a little league football player and you get all jacked up about pads, and then you go to high school and you get all jacked up about pads, and you go to college and you get all jacked up about pads, and then when you get in the NFL. There's really not much difference between practicing in pads or practicing out of pads. I mean, they just got to get used to carrying the pads again. So the, the, the thumping out there was a little bit harder than, than what, it is, what we've been doing before. Uh, but really, you get a good evaluation of since we've been here. It, you know, in, in mini camp, it was hard because we didn't let the guys go. We didn't let the front go. But since we've been in camp, we, we've let the front go. So really, you know, you find out that there's not very many surprises because the guys in this league, they go hard because they're fighting for a job. You know, so we have to tell them, whoa, whoa, all the time, even though they only just have a helmet on. They go full speed. Uh, so uh, I didn't expect to see anything different yesterday from what we've done from the first time we started practicing. With DJ Bonham, he was talking yesterday, he's watched a lot of other defensive ends, whether it's Daniil trying to pick up on that skill set, but he also talked about, you know, Pierce, Tomlinson, learning some of the four eye. What can he take from some of the interior technique that you'd like to see him apply it? And um, well, it's not just him, but you know, all of our ends have to learn how to play somewhat like our three techniques and nose play, because there's times where we tighten those da those guys down. And they're not always on the outside shoulder of a tackle or outside shoulder of a tight end. So. Uh, the techniques that the D tackles use when they have to play inside a tackle, you know, they've got to execute those same techniques in the run game. Um, so, uh, so that's the reason probably why he's talking to the big guys of when I get caught in a certain position, you know, how do you get out of it? So he's watching tape and he sees, you know, Dalvin in a position where he really should be blocked and he found a way to get out of it. So that's probably why he's asking him those questions. Andre, what, uh, what, what impact did Betty uh, releasing glad they have on the defense? Um, I don't think any right now because he hadn't been here. You know, I mean, it's it's sad to say, but, the, you know, the NFL is out of sight, out of mind. You know I mean? You get hurt and you're injured, the train keeps moving. You know, it never stops for anybody. You know, that's just the way this league is. So he hasn't been here. He hasn't been practicing. So, you know, he hasn't been around a group. So, it, you know, other than the guys, the guys feeling because they have a relationship with him. But when it comes to the football part of it, you know, he hasn't been here. So it really hasn't been an adjustment factor there. Yeah, there are things like this happen and teams have to move on from guys? And uh, no, because it's just it's just the way this league is. You know, I, you know, I I feel sorry that he's in the situation that he's in. Um, you know, but you know, me personally, if it's true, then I don't. <laughs> That's just the truth of the matter. That's just who I am as a human being. You know, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's true or if it's not true. Uh, but if it's true, you know, you're a grown man. And if you put yourself in those kind of uh, positions, then you you know you got to pay the consequences. That's the way life is. So uh, uh, there's no sorrow in my heart. How different is Sheldon's role now versus when he was here back in '18? Uh, it's a little bit because right now he's not starting, um, but he's going to play a lot. You know, he's going to play a lot on base downs. He's going to play a lot on third downs. Uh, so when we go out here at practice, he's getting he's getting reps against the ones too, and that's just not rolling against the twos. Uh, so I expect him to play a lot. You know, in my mind, I got two starting three techniques between you know him and uh, him and Big Dalvin. He 
he's played a lot of different roles, dating back to when he's an outside linebacker in Seattle or the Jets, wherever it was. And how does all of that experience and just like all of those different things, where he can line up, where you can align him, how does that help him for what you're going to ask him to do in various situations? Well, it helps him because he, he's had the experience of rushing in different places. You know, he's had to rush over a tackle. He's had to rush over a guard. He's had to rush over a center. So that helps him because he feels comfortable rushing in any place we put him on the front. Um, and then that helps us because we can we can put him in different places so we can find matchup problems, you know, through the course of the season that we can put him in different spots to be able to take advantage of that. Find a backup who has legitimate starting is a starting caliber quality player, but is now anticipating a backup role. Do you? Have you ever had that type of situation before? Um, you know, sometimes you have it when guys, you know, are, are I'm not saying showing at the end of his career, so don't take it the wrong way. But, you know, sometimes you have guys that have, uh, you know, hit their past the 30 mark, you know, and so teams try to get younger. And this is a way for a guy to continue to play and still get a lot of reps. And when you have that, that's a, that's a huge bonus for you. You know, when I was in Cleveland, we had Kennard Lang, and I had him in, in – uh, I had him in Denver also, you know, and Kennard had been a longtime starter with the Redskins, you know, and we, I, I got him to come to Cleveland, and he, he played that role. And then when I went to Denver, I got him to come to Denver, and he played that role. And so, uh, you know, he was very productive for us, and it kind of helped him, you know, be able to, to steal four or five more years, you know, in his career and, and still make some money and, and still was able to give me six or seven sacks a season. What do, you, what do you think is the biggest appeal to reunite with former players like Sheldon or Steven? Appeal for them? What do you tell for you? Uh, uh, well, it's a couple of things. One, they're still good football players. Uh, two, they know what we do and who we are. Uh, so the transition uh, isn't that hard. Uh, you know, and so there's comfort level on both sides. They know what they're getting into, and I know what I'm getting. So I think those are the biggest, the biggest factors. Andre, I imagine you went against uh, Steve Hutchinson, maybe more so early in his career when he was in Seattle. But what was it like going against Hutchinson, and how does he? He's getting in the Hall of Fame this weekend. How's he rank among? guards you've uh, gone against? In your uh, he's one of the best to ever play. Uh, he was strong. He was physical and athletic. Uh, you know, Larry Allen is the best that I've ever seen. Um, but he was right there. You know, he was right there. And, he, and it's well deserving for him to be a member of the Hall of Fame. Obviously some success last year, but he said he's enjoying the fact that you're moving people around. Uh, so when a guy can keep his humility and then still be open to it when he's young, what does that say to you? Um, you know, I told you guys when we drafted him, I fell in love with him because of who he is as a human being. You know, he's a, he's a great, humble person that's a hard worker, that's going to do everything the team asks him to do, and he's a tremendous athlete. And uh, so when I had a chance to meet with that young man a year ago, um, you know, it reminded me of my conversations that I had with Daniil. You know, very humble, uh, hardworking, had his priorities in the right place. And uh, so that's why I, I fought so hard to try to get that guy here because you know, those qualities are hard to find when you're a tremendous athlete. You know, usually guys think, you know, they're the best thing since sliced bread, you know, and, and those two guys aren't like that. You know, they're humble and they want to work hard every day. They got to drive to improve. And those things are really hard to find, you know, as a coach. When the Broncos come here next week, how beneficial is that for a defense that has a lot of spots that are competitive? Oh, that'll be great because now you're going up against somebody new. You know, a, a different offense. Uh, the guy on the other side of the ball doesn't know what you like to do, and we don't know what they like to do. You know, so you know, tens intensity level will pop up a little bit, especially on the first day. Um, but it's like it always is. You know, the second day, we, we gotta we gotta kick them a little bit to get them to go, because then they realize it's just practice. You know, so uh, but it, it'll be great competition. Last couple for coach. What are the benefits of having? want him in that outside linebacker role versus just a traditional linebacker? Um, his athleticism. 
you know, his athleticism, if he, if, if he couldn't run to stay with tight ends and, and uh, running backs and receivers, you couldn't do it. You know, you couldn't do it. So his athleticism, uh, he's smart. And then you, now you have an opportunity to maybe get some mismatches where you get him on a back coming off the edge instead of having to rush against a, an offensive tackle. What have you seen out of Orman Watts the past couple of practices? Oh, he's improved a lot. He's in the best shape of his life. I, I have a lot of respect of how hard Amon worked this offseason. Um, this is the best shape I've ever seen him in. And uh, um, he's having a great camp so far. Um, he's making a lot of plays in the backfield, in the run game. He's rushing well. Um, so I think it's two things. I think, one, obviously he's in the best shape he's ever been in. But I think, two, there's a lot of competition in that room. Guys are fighting for a job. So, you know, I think that's made a lot of guys' level come up. But because Ahmad's in great shape, he could compete to that level now. And when we got him, he's always shown that he had the potential to do that. But because he wasn't in great shape, you know, he would get tired and that make his pads rise up and he, and he couldn't attack the line like he needed to. So the best thing he did for himself is get himself in great condition. And we had long conversations about that uh, in the off season when the season was over last year. Played a lot of free technique at college. What, what did you see in him that made you think he was a really good fit for the nose? Um, well, he, he's big enough to play both spots and he's athletic enough to play both spots. Um, and so that was one of the reasons why, um, you know, I liked him coming out because he, he had the physical strength and size to be able to hang in there at a, as a nose guard. But then he also has some quick twitch to him to where you can move him and have him play some three technique.